How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video here on the channel where we deal with all sorts of go-kart stuff, cars, anything to do with cars and four wheels. Um, now, in the last video you guys saw, which was the second part of the governor removal video on my go-kart here, Matt and I, and also partially Will, we, tr we removed the governor and tried to get the engine started up again, but we were not successful in doing that. Um, we were trying to figure out what was wrong, so we had issues with the rocker arms being misaligned from the push rods, and we tried to figure that out, um, but we just couldn't get it to start. So the t today's video's content is going to be around us trying to get this thing started so we can finally do another speed test to see how much faster this thing is after we remove the governor. probably saw in the end of the last video I noted that we were um, that I had done some research and figured out that anytime the cam is removed from the engine you need to do you need to lash the valves which is basically setting the tension or the torque setting if you will on the nut the placement nut that holds the rocker arms in place so it either applies too much or too little or just enough pressure on the valve cover or not the valve cover, the valve spring head, um, so that it can open and close the valves properly. Um, so I'm thinking we didn't latch the valves. That was something I've never done before. I'm I, that was my first time pulling that engine open, which is awesome because it's a great learning experience. Matt and I were talking about how this engine is an awesome little way to learn the inside and outs of an engine, like the basics. Obviously, as you get bigger, the stuff gets more complicated, but um, that's what we're gonna be doing today is basically trying to lash the valves and see if that is the solution to getting this thing to run again. So one critical tool we need to complete this job are something called a fueler gauge. So it's basically a bunch of different size uh, metal, pe uh, flat pieces of metal, otherwise known as like a shim. That's basically what you're doing is when you lash the valves, um, you basically shim the distance between the rocker arm and the, the flat part of the valve on the valve spring. So uh, there's certain specs that you need for each the intake and the exhaust valve and that's noted in the manual for the Predator 212 so we're going to look at that and um, go from there. Okay so one thing so when you open up the, the manual to the Predator 212 it's on the very first page on the inside and the um, the clearance for the valves it's right here at the bottom so you got 0.1 to 0.15 millimeter for the intake and 0.15 to 0.2 for the exhaust valve. So we'll go ahead and get those feeler gauges out. And um, also sometimes people go up um, by uh, 0.05 millimeters to account for expansion when the, when the engine gets hot. So when the pieces get warm uh, from the engine heating up, they'll expand a little bit. So you could go make the gap a little bit bigger to account for that. So we might do that as well. One other key point I haven't mentioned yet is when you lash the valves, apparently you're supposed to do it when the engine is at top dead center. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be unscrewing the spark plug and using a screwdriver to kind of estimate. Um, so we'll rotate the um, this pulley here on the torque converter and, and try to get the piston at the highest point in the combustion chamber. And then that's when we know uh, is a good point to lash the valves. Um, and also we'll be testing the spark plug. So we're gonna pull this and then we'll still plug it back in and we'll test the spark plug to see um, if the spark plug is still good. Cause that is also another area that could be causing the engine to not start. Matt, you want to fill the lads and ladies in on what's going on here? Uh, we pulled the spark plug and it was something I thought about yesterday that it looked that we probably should replace it anyways. 
We just tested it. Um, we're not seeing any spark whatsoever. Yeah. And it maybe looks like it may be a little worn or wet anyways. So it's never a bad idea. I think just replace it while we've got it out. Yeah. So I think we'll take that on today's game plan once right. we uh, set the lash. So we, we had to take the spark plug out anyways. So in order to, I mean, you guys can't really see, but in that hole, I mean, you can see the top of the piston. So you're supposed to set the valve latch when the piston's at top dead center or the engine is. Um, and while the p spark plug was also out, we plugged it back into the, the lead here for the spark plug, pulled the pull cord, and ideally when you do that, you should see a spark. Um, the spark plug looked a little wet when we pulled it out, um, so I don't know if that was because we pulled, we tried to pull start the engine way too many times yesterday, or on Friday when we did this, so it just soaked the uh, combustion chamber, um, and I guess that might have maybe ruined the spark plug, so um, I don't know, we'll have to see. I think hopefully a combination of setting the latch and getting a new plug um, will help us out here. Do you already set the exhaust? No, we're still working on it. It's kind of a fine part of getting it too, like, too far on the So um, we just set the latch on the valves for both the intake and the exhaust. And um, what they reckon what I've seen on YouTube is when you set the lash, you know, you obviously tighten down the lock nut on top, and then you want to cycle the engine a few times um, to make sure the lash stays consistent to what you set it at. So I just pulled the pull cord probably about five or six times, cycled the engine on a however many times uh, one pull cycles it, and then set the engine back to top dead center again, and then we're gonna just check the lash one more time. Um, and then we gotta go make a trip to the auto parts store to get us a new spark plug. All right, so we got the valve lash all set. We had to adjust it a little bit again after rotating the engine a few times. Um, so Matt's throwing on the valve cover before we head out. And then we're gonna take our spark plug, which is right here, we'll go to the auto parts store, grab the same one. I think we're gonna go with an NGK spark plug. Um, I don't know, I've heard those work pretty good on these engines, so. And then we'll come back and install it and hopefully this thing will fire up. All right, made it to the auto parts store. Hi, boys. Hi, everyone. Sports. Everyone has this craft electrical transmission sealer spray. All right, so here's the old spark plug. And here's our brand new NGK plug. So we're gonna get a whole another five horsepower just by having an NGK plug. And we also got some anti-seize for when we put it in there. Now let's go ahead. We're gonna test this guy, uh, just plug it into the lead first and see if it sparks just to make sure there's nothing wrong with our lead before we go ahead and screw it in. All right, new spark plug is in. The lead is connected. So let's go ahead and give this puppy a try, see what happens. Yes, on. on. Start switch on. That's it. Oh, oh baby. Okay, I think it's got to warm up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that'll do it. Wait, 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 I need that. It has to be good. Gosh, how many Go times for are Snapchat?
I wouldn't let it get in crazy rock. Success! Yeah! Okay.